Welcome to the Social Stack, your go-to channel for real estate technology and uh, marketing tips. So my name is Amy Stack, and today I am going to be giving some quick tips, um, kind of a recap of a class I was able to attend during our family reunion uh, convention. So anybody watching that is not part of Keller Williams, that is our annual convention where we do lots of training and networking. Um, so today we're going to be talking about zero to MREA, which is zero dollars to millionaire real estate agent. Um, and we're going to talk about four steps to get more listings. Uh, I did break this class into two sessions. So we're going to, going to do two steps today and two steps next week. And I see something came in the chat real quick. Oh, we just got thank you so far. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. All right. So this class was packed. It was amazing. Lots of great tidbits. And uh, there are some other similar sessions on KW Connect. So for those of you with KW, if you do want to see some other sessions like this, you're going to want to look for Meg um, D, I think is how you say it. It's M-E-G Meg. D-A-D-A-Y is her name, uh, but I believe the class is called the same thing if you want to look for more resources on KW Connect. But basically, she presented to us some ways that she was able to really build her business and in the midst of the pandemic and with everything that's going on with the market where we don't really have an inventory shortage, we just can't keep anything on very long, right? And we have all these buyers looking for um, properties and it's just things are flying off the market. So how do we go find them those listings, right? And let me click over one slide here. There we go. Our four main steps that we're gonna talk about overall in the two weeks here are how to go small, how to strategically connect, how to go deep, and then how to do it consistently. So today we're gonna to focus on these first two of go small and strategically connect. So if anybody wants to screenshot or write those down, that's what we're focusing on today. So to go small, this is gonna be the participation part, okay? You really need to know what your goal is in order to build a plan around it. So could anybody share with me either in the chat or you can unmute, just let me know how many deals do you wanna do this year? 21. 21. Okay. 172. Yay, Kathy. <laughs> what else? 100. Okay. I know you guys all know what your goals are. And if not, if you don't know what your goal is, make sure you go talk to your agent services, your ATL, your team leaders. They will help you figure out what that number is. Because if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to know how to get there. Am I right? All right, we're seeing 45, 50, 25, 15. This is fantastic. You guys can probably tell that these numbers go from one end all the way to the other. And these principles that we're gonna talk about today are gonna to apply to all of them. 24, another 15. Thank you guys for sharing. Now go find somebody to help you hold yourself accountable to that. Some of you guys have really similar numbers. So go make a friend, talk to each other in the chat, get each other's contact information. All right, so I put what's your goal first because you need to know where you're going, like I said, before you can figure out a plan to get there, right? So now that you know what number you need, do you know how many people you need to connect with? How many deals do you want? If you want 15 deals, you need a 15 people to do a deal with, right? If you need 24, it's 24. So how do you decide what net you're casting, right? A lot of people want to advertise or market to, you know, a thousand people. They don't want to leave anybody out because that could be a piece of business, right? But if you only need the 15 people, why don't you just look for those 15 people specifically, right? You don't need to reach every single person in Chicago or Boston, or wherever you are, you need to reach the 15, the 30, the 127 people that are going to do the deal with you, right? So how do you find who those people are? Does anybody have an ideal client so far? Have you guys thought this through? Here's a little exercise. If you guys are taking notes, I want you to write down um, or you can also unmute and share with us. Has anybody worked with a client 
that you're like, this person was absolutely phenomenal. I want all of my people to be just like them. No, nobody's had a client like that. Oh, Brittany. I have. Okay, Brittany. So what are some of the things? Oh, and Erica said yes in the chat. Great. I want you guys to think, oh, now everybody's participating. Good job. Way to start it, Brittany. <laughs> I want you guys to think about that person. And if you guys haven't had a client like that, think about some traits you would love to see in a client, or maybe you've had different clients and you like this about person A and this about person B. I want you guys to go ahead and make a list and think about all those amazing traits that they have and why you liked working with them. Okay. You really want to get specific on the people that you're looking for. Has anybody heard of an ideal client avatar? Okay, so basically what we're going to do is create a personality of who we think our ideal client would be. So what are some traits that you guys liked about those clients that you said, I wish everybody, everybody I worked with was like that? Go ahead and put them in the chat or, or share with us. Everybody's taking notes. Open to my advice. That is awesome. That's a great one, Erica. Yeah, listens when you you give the buyer consult and the lending process and you've told them the do's and do not. Yeah. Um, but then I had my, she actually happens to be my best friend's mom, but she was so grateful about everything, mm -hmm. even like a lot, like so many things went wrong and she was just still very grateful yeah. the whole time. And she always was coming from like happiness and abundance, not from negativity. Yes, that's and that's the kind of clients I like. Perfect. Okay. So thank you for sharing. We also in the chat, we're seeing reasonable takes advice, uh, relied on me, grateful, grateful and organized, knowledgeable. Um, what about some of those things, some of those things about people like, what types of job did that person have? What types of hobbies did they have? Were they interested in the same things you were? I'm a dog person. I love other dog people, right? Has anybody thought about that about their clients? Anything you connected on? I like craft beer. I, I like to do, you know, beer tastings and bourbon tastings with my friends. Brittany said, I don't want to mop while I'm talking. <laughs> That's okay. So just think about that type of stuff as well. Um, Meg shared that her ideal client was a professional woman who probably lived in the city. Um, she's single at this point and she had a price point in mind. So you want to throw that price point in there. If you're looking for a very specific geographical area, you're going to want to throw that in there for your client as well, your ideal client. Um, uh, Bernie said she wants to be my friend and go to the tastings. Louisiana, good, good spot. We were there for a uh, family reunion a few years ago. It was a lot of fun. So um, I want you to think about all of those things, right? You don't want to work with people that you don't want to work with. Does that make sense? If you're really high energy and you're outgoing, it's probably going to be a bummer for you to work with an introvert. I hate to say it, but you don't want somebody that's going to be, you know, closed in and not willing to share. And vice versa, if you're uh, somebody who isn't super high energy working with an agent that is up here all the time, it's just going to be so draining, right? So you want to think about those energy levels. You want to think about the hobbies, things that you can relate to. Um, if we're thinking about social media, when you're sharing things about your life that you like to do, you're naturally going to attract people that like those things as well. Um, let's see, Brittany, you said, I work with a lot of credit repair people because they're usually coming from gratitude once we um, get them able to buy, 100%. So you don't have to think just about specific personality traits. You can also think about your niche. Thank you for bringing that up because if you guys don't already know, where are riches? In the niches. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite sayings. So uh, credit repair, first time home buyer, VA, seniors, you know, there's tons of niches out there, but you being able to go really deep 
into a niche will help other people um, be attracted to you that are looking for that same thing. And you'll get to the point where somebody will come to you and they won't be in your niche and you'll say, you know, thank you so much for thinking of me. I've actually got this great referral partner in Louisiana, right? <laughs> Who uh, can, can really be a great resource for you and you'll be able to find and other people that um, specialize in niches that you can um, refer business back and forth with. So I want you to get those traits written down, um, hobbies, what types of price ranges you're looking at, if you want a geographical area, if you're looking at a niche, like a type of transaction, get all of that written down so you know who you are seeking out, okay? And that's really going to, oh, I skipped, I went ahead of this. This is what we just went over. That's really going to help you identify who your people are. So what are their hobbies? Where are they? And who do they know? So the important thing about who do they know is if we're working our sphere, we're inviting, you know, the people that we know, but how many people do they know, right? If, if you are targeting those working professionals, they probably also work with working professionals so they can bring more, more people into your sphere. Does that make sense? All right. So the next thing I want to go over with Go Small is, uh, oh, is where can you find them, right? So we talked about hobbies and everything. What types of groups are those people involved in that maybe you can get involved in as well? I mentioned, you know, I'm a dog person. So actually Meg used an example of an agent who took her dog to the dog park all the time, and then she got purposeful about it. So she took the dog multiple times a day to the dog park so that she could could meet other dog owners. She took that to the next level, level and you can, you know, bring some water bottles. Have you guys, if you're dog, if you're pet people, you know that there's like collapsible water bowls for dogs. Um, she got some of those branded and handed them out. So she was able to meet people that way. And then she told her friends, her dog park friends to bring their dog park friends. So she was able to meet more people. And it wasn't all about um, real estate, it was just about building that relationship. And then she was meeting these people. And when there were dog events going on in town, she would share that with that sphere and they would just, she would just be constantly in front of them and they would remember her when the time came to buy or sell. And then of course they know that she's a dog lover at heart. So when they say that their top priority is the big backyard for their dog and they want in that fenced in yard, they know that she's going to put that first because she understands, right? So what other types of groups, what are some hobbies that you guys already do um, that you could possibly turn into a source of lead gen? What are some of your hobbies out there? Um, so I have a kids and travel team. Oh, what travel team? So uh, we have baseball travel teams and we have oh, cool. basketball travel teams. So what I'm doing now is I'm, tr I know a lot of the moms love um, white claws yes. and they love to hide them when they go. <laughs> so I am branding um, for myself, whatever I'm branding like koozies, but you know, the high end ones that will keep your drink cold um, to hand out when we have our first games. That's amazing. I love that, Jessica. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We hear people say all the time, I don't like lead gen. I don't like cold calling, right? Lead gen doesn't have to be cold calling. It can be anything where you're you're networking with people and meeting new people. Um, Brittany put drinking coffee in the chat. That's another great way, right? You can, there's all kinds of different ways to meet people. You know, go to a Starbucks and start chatting with people. Go to a coffee event. There's lots of local coffee shops that do events. Maybe host an event at a coffee shop and invite your other coffee lover friends to it. Um, Jason Abrams talks a lot about this, about how lead gen shouldn't be like a source of anxiety for you. It should be fun. It should give you energy. So what are some things that already give you energy? Um, I know of a, a, a woman who put together, she loved playing tennis. So she grabbed some of her tennis friends and asked them to bring somebody um, to the courts that she didn't already know and give them, she collected the names of everybody that was coming at the set day and time and she planned out the whole match for them. So she then turned this into a regular activity. So she still got to play tennis, you know, weekly, yet she was meeting all these new people and able to network with them. She started doing branded water bottles to give them. She put some banners up when she did a, like a bigger match that said it was sponsored by, you know, herself or her, her company name. 
Um, there was another woman who loved shopping. Who doesn't like shopping, right? So she got a mall walking group together. And she literally was networking while walking around the mall window shopping with, with women. Another woman, um, these are all women. Hmm. There's a little trend going on there. <laughs> Another woman was a new mom and uh, you'd have to go grocery shopping, uh, but they, it, it was a time to kind of get away from the kids. So she got a whole bunch of young moms together and they just went grocery shopping together to have that adult time and still be productive to get their groceries, right? And then she was able to meet all these other people that were similar to her and shared some of those traits as well. Um, but you could do this with, you know, Relo, military, sororities, seniors. You could do different types of um, school activities, like you said, with the, the baseball and the basketball. So that's, those are just some ideas on how you can really go small to go big. I see in the chat, my kids in ball, science kits with my kids, crafts, making cakes, getting back into fitness, drinking wines and bourbon. Yeah, one of my agents works, uh, he, he goes to a boxing gym. So he networks with his boxers all the time and meets new people because they bring new people into the gym too. And he's able to, he has to actually build a whole investment business off of that as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. So I'm glad that you guys got your, your thinking juices going there. Oh, I went backwards, apologize about that. So our next tip that I wanted to cover today is how to strategically connect. So now that you know who you're looking for, we need to know what the purpose is that you have in your business. So uh, Mark Rantis is an agent out of the Barrington office in another Chicago suburb. And he has a mission to help adult children have another cup of coffee um, oops, I typed that wrong, with their parents. Meaning you don't wanna have to be worrying about um, you know, estate sales and where, we, where are mom and dad moving and all that pressure about what's gonna happen, where they're gonna go, all that type of stuff. You wanna be able to spend time with your parents. So his mission was to help those adult children spend that extra time with them. So for that, he decided he wanted to start providing some very specific value out into that community to attract people to him and to be able to help them um, take their, make their transition process much easier and simpler. And then not only provide information about, um, you know, buying or selling for seniors, but actually leaving a legacy for their, their children. So he has partnered with some elder law attorneys and estate sale professionals, CPAs, people that can put trusts together, and then organized um, some seminars around that. So he created a, a professional network to be able to provide high value in, and those people are actually all working together because they all have the same clients. So they're helping each other attract people to this um, network to be able to get leads for each other. So providing that specific value, you guys see how he went really deep into that one type of category? Perfect. So then the next question we get a lot is, all right, well, now we have all these people, we have all these resources, but how do we find that target audience that wants them, right? One of the things that Mark did was he actually did some B2B networking. Um, he got into some local organizations. Uh, one, obviously in this case, it was it's for seniors, targeting um, resources for seniors. And he started holding a downsizer seminar uh, regularly and took it to the next level as far as getting leads in goes. He actually partnered with local assisted living facilities, right? They have the same target market. So think about who your target audience is and what businesses out there share that with you and see what you can do to partner with them. So he actually went to these assisted living facilities. They typically have some sort of larger spaces where you can do some a seminar. So he was holding seminars there and they were actually bringing people in for him because they wanted people to be educated on that process of selling their home and moving into the facility as well so that those people could be best um, equipped and save as much money as they could for their children and then still be able to afford the care that they needed. So that those, organizations were giving him a space for free and helping advertise the event to get clients in. So he just showed up with the value and with those other resources, like I said, the CPA um, and the real estate professional, the um, estate sale professionals and stuff like that. And that was a way he was able to find more people 
that matched his mission of being able to get those parents and children, adult children, to spend more time together and be less stressed with that moving process. So the things that I wanted to talk about as far as tech, I know we didn't really talk a lot about technology yet, right, is what can we use to help us leverage these systems um, that we've talked about today. And one is tags. So we talked about all these different hobbies that people could have, these traits that they might have. Um, so by tagging your system, and if you're not using command, if you're putting them into groups, it's the same type of thing. But being able to categorize the different people that are in your CRM uh, will help you be able to send out mass marketing and communications when you have something to offer them or you're throwing an event that you think they would be interested in. Um, and then using your task reminders, calendar events, stuff like that to help you schedule things out. That's going to be a great piece of technology for you as well. Task reminders, if you're having an event to remind you of the different steps, different times you need to send information out or automated emails that could work um, for tech as well. Um, most of the people there said they were using some sort of lead capture form like a Google form so that when people did come to their events or um, you know, they met them out on the street, they had a form on their phone they could really quickly fill out or use number five, the command mobile app, but having some sort of way to get that information of those new leads so that you can get them into their system so that you can then follow up with them. So Google Forms came up a lot. And then QR codes too, um, especially in today's world. Uh, one of the silver linings of everything that's been going on is that people know how to use Zoom and they know how to use QR codes now. So you can have a QR code where somebody can just pull that form up right on their phone without having to fill out a physical piece of paper and then you having to figure out, is that an A or a U, right? Is that a number? Is it a letter? What's going on here? So QR code is another great piece of tech to help you with that as well. And then number five, like I mentioned, is command mobile. So when you are on the go, um, if you guys haven't played with your command app yet, you do have the ability to create contacts right inside that app that will feed into command. And on top of that, if you're having communication with somebody uh, who's already in command, you can actually do a voice memo. So if you have the voice to text feature on your phone, which I think all smartphones have that these days, um, if you call somebody, so if Command Mobile says, hey, it's time to follow up with Amy, and you hit my name and give me a call, once you're done with that call, the app is going to ask, do you want to log the information? And you can say yes, and you can just verbally talk into the phone, and it will record all of your notes for you and upload them right into Command on the spot. And then you have access to all of that data on the go through the app as well. So those are some of the leverage pieces I wanted to mention to you. Oh, I went backwards again. And then I wanted to open it up for some questions. So we've talked about so far how to go small and then how you can really get strategic about um, connections. So what is on your mind about that stuff? I'm going to stop the share so I can see everybody's faces. No questions? I did that good of a job. You guys knew everything? Maybe you're all that smart. <laughs> Brittany said, just to let you know the email, oh, you, it kicked back. Oh, let me, let me retype it in there for you. I apologize. I probably spelled something wrong. Yeah, I think it's just missing the extra S on success because when I resent it and I added the extra S. Oh, uh, yep. Just two C's, two went through. lots of letters. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions about how to identify that I make create that ideal client avatar, how to identify the needs of your clients and where they might be? Um, I love all that. What sort of tags are y'all using for your different groups? Because that is where I think I overthink things. That is a good question. If anybody has anything to add um, about tags, I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, I do know a lot of people will do tags in multiple places. If you weren't aware, you can tag your contact as well as your opportunity. So a lot of people will use, uh, they'll have their lead source in the contact card, but then they'll also tag that on the opportunity. So at the end of the year, you can see, you know, I had a hundred people come from the senior seminars that I was holding. How many of them actually turned into a deal, right? So the opportunity tag will tell you how many um, deals came out of it and closed. Um, we also have a lot of people doing tags, like I said, the hobbies, right? Um, so 
you know, your coffee folks, your school sports folks, um, if you are doing a farm, doing that neighborhood as a tag has been really popular. And then something that doesn't correlate 100% to what we've been talking about today, but it's still a really important tag is doing your VIPs or your top 20%, because those are the people that are repeat clients or are constantly referring you clients. And those are the people that you want to make sure you're paying attention to um, at a high level and, and dripping on more frequently and rewarding them for that good behavior. Any other tags that you guys like to use out there? No? You're a quiet bunch today. All right, well, um, that was our two tips for of our four for the listings for this week. We're right at 11 o'clock, so I do want to respect all of your guys' time. Um, but that means that next week you can come back and we'll do the uh, the go deep. And I forgot what the last one was. I need my notes. This is why I make PowerPoints, you guys. Uh, we'll talk about how to go deep. Oh, yeah, and how to stay consistent. That's so important. That's why it's number one. That's the Thank answer. you. Oh, okay. did you have another question? No, but thank you, Amy. Hi, Carol. Thank you. It's good. Very good. All right. So we'll be here same time, same place next week. So you can hop on the same Zoom link um, at 1030 Central Time next Thursday, I think is March 3rd. <laughs> um, are we going to discuss more of the marketing next week that y'all that you send out to the people? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. part of go deep. Great question. So yes, part of going deep is getting in front of the people. So thank you for asking that. Um, yeah, come back. We'll talk about marketing next week as well.